Hello and welcome to lecture 34 of Math 1B03. In today's lecture we're going to be looking at section 5.5 of the textbook where we're going to be looking at complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So today's lecture directly builds upon yesterday's or lecture 33 where we learned about complex numbers. We're going to be using that arithmetic in today's lecture. And we're going to actually focus specifically on the, the case of two by two matrices with its complex eigenvalues. So that's our focus for today. So let's make myself disappear here. Okay, so first of all, let me talk to you a little bit about complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So first of all, here's our setup. We have a n by n matrix, complex matrix. So we're allowing some of the entries of the matrix to be complex numbers as well as real numbers. And what is a complex eigenvalue? Well, it's exactly the same definition that you've seen before, but now we're allowing both the uh, scalar to be a complex number and the entries in our vector to be uh, the entries in our vector are to also be complex numbers. So a complex scalar, lambda, is a complex eigenvalue if there is a vector v with allowing complex entries such that Oh, and I should say non-zero here. We, we still need that non-zero condition. So here, actually, let me clean that all up. So we have a non-zero vector V such that A times V is equal to lambda times V. And like before, we call V the eigenvector, but we would call it a complex eigenvector. So we call V the complex eigenvector. Okay, so just like what we defined before, but now we're allowing the entries to be complex numbers. Here's a little uh, comic to keep you hopefully awake. Uh, okay, so you can read that in your le leisure. And remember, what, when we learned about eigenvectors, the, one of the ways that we motivated it was that when you're looking over Rn, eigenvectors correspond to stretching a vector. So if we found a vector that was an eigenvector and we multiplied it by the corresponding matrix, we would just get a scalar multiple of the matrix. So what we're trying to do today is kind of understand, well, what does it mean when you get a complex eigenvalue because in the real case the stretching or the factor which you stretch it is the is the eigenvalue so what does it mean to stretch by a complex eigenvalue okay so let's look at an example here and we'll kind of drag this example through today's lecture so we have a two by two matrix uh, and we're going to consider the linear transformation given by this matrix, okay? So we're just multiplying by the matrix uh, A, as we've done before. And what we want to do is show geometrically that A has no real eigenvalues, okay? And one way to, know, to observe this is that for any point A, B in the plane, when we stick it into our function, if we take a, b, and we say, well, where does it get mapped to? It gets mapped to the point 0, negative 1, 1, 0, multiplied by a, b. And when I multiply that out, I get minus b, a. Now, you may not have a, that great of an intuition about what this means, but let's just draw a little picture here so you can see what would happen. Let's say that I have my a here, and I have my b here, and I'm looking at my original vector right here. So here's my vector a, b, and we want to know where it gets sent after I multiply by my matrix a. Well, it tells me then that it should get sent to minus b, a. So hopefully it's not totally to the scale, but you can see what happens here. This is where the vector gets sent after I multiplied the matrix. And now we, this is true for any particular point. So you take any point, really what it's doing is you're rotating, right? So that's what we actually have here. We have a linear transformation of a rotation. So every point that you stick in will get rotated 90 degrees about the x-axis. So if I can 
values and eigenvectors corresponding to stretching. Over here, there's going to be no real eigenvalues because no vector gets stretched. No vector keeps its direction. It always gets spun off into a different direction. So the matrix A has no real eigenvalues since every point is sent to a new direction. No vector gets sent into the same direction as the original vector. So this is kind of a geometric argument about why this matrix here can have no real eigenvalues. Now, of course, we could have just done this algebraically, and maybe many of you would have preferred to do it that way. And let's just double check here. Here, I'm going to compute the I, uh, characteristic equation or characteristic uh, characteristic equation. So I take A minus, oh, this should be a 2. It shouldn't be an N. So I2, we cook up our matrix. And here I get uh, lambda squared plus 1 equals 0. And notice that the only solution here is lam lambda equals plus or minus the imaginary number I. So the geometry kind of already implied that we shouldn't find any real eigenvalues, and the algebra verifies that this is indeed the case. And the big idea you should take away from today's uh, series of parts or series lectures on complex eigenvalues is that if you have a linear transformation given by multiplying by a matrix A, and A has complex eigenvalues, then what you can think about is that T corresponds to a rotation. T corresponds to a rotation. So somehow complex eigenvalues correspond to rotating points. That's the kind of the geometric point of view. And we're going to kind of dive deeply into this a little bit more carefully a little bit more detail as we go in, uh, into the next couple parts of our lectures. So that's the big idea to keep in the back of your mind as we go forward. Let's take a quick pause as we get set up for the next part.